Rake versus B E K. Dedicated to one of my wonderful long term listeners, Elki. Elki on her birthday. Happy birthday, Elki. Hope you enjoy the story. Rake versus B E K. Want to spend a few days at the cabin? The invitation from my buddy Morris came out of the blue. So I wondered if there was a catch. We used to be pretty tight at one time, but we drifted apart. He must have read my mind, for he said, I thought it would be great to get together and、uh, reestablish our friendship. Besides, there's something. I want to ask you about to show you. Ah, now we're getting down to it. Can you come over to my place later? I want to show you something. I have to admit, I was intrigued to find out what he wanted. And a few days away from the city would be okay, too. So I came over. After a few beers and some small talk, Morris finally got around to business. He took me into his office, where he had a laptop with a large monitor. As we sat down, he told me, I have security cameras out at the cabin. I want to show you something that turned up last weekend. I was expecting the usual grainy black and white footage, but instead, these images were crystal clear and In color. We saw a patch of brownish lawn. It had been a dry summer and fall, with a grove of thick trees along the top of the frame. At first, all you could see was this bucolic scene. But then, suddenly, a pair of alabaster white arms, arms ending in huge clawed hands, were thrust from out of the underbrush. And the arms were followed by the rest of an extraordinary humanoid creature. It was an emaciated albino with glowing red eyes, standing about five feet in height. As we watched spellbound, it dropped to all fours, running diagonally across the lawn. The strange being then appeared at the rear of the property, obviously trying to gain entry. Thank God I always put the shutters up before I go to bed, Morris said. It was just after two when the creature made its appearance. The weird creature was captured next by the camera at the front of the cabin. After triggering the security lights, it moved leisurely, still on all fours, across the dirt driveway and into the tall grass of the nearby ravine. What is that thing? Morris said. A space alien? Well, I didn't experience any missing time or anything. No, I said slowly. That's not a gray alien. I think it's an entity known as the Rake. Morris smiled, so I added, No, <laughs> not that type of Rake. I explained to him that the Rake was a cryptid or paranormal entity. A hairless albino humanoid, known for its sharp teeth, huge rake like hands, and incredibly long claws. It was also known for its extremely aggressive behavior towards humans and had been documented as entering homes and bedrooms to kill. I also told him about the controversial research of a cryptozoologist named Arsenault. Who believed the rake to be a subterranean dweller living in caves and fissures beneath the earth? Well, there's lots of caves around here, Morris said. The cabin is at the base of the dirt hills, which are riddled with caves. They even did a little mining around here. As might be guessed, the upshot of this discussion was my agreeing to join Morris. 
as an observer, uh, I guess, at the cabin that weekend. The cabin was situated about 40 miles south of the city on a small rise in the dirt hills. It had a rutted dirt driveway and was surrounded on both sides by ravines overgrown with shrubs and scrub trees. While the surroundings weren't overly picturesque, it was great to get out of town, even if we were only a short distance away. Morris put a pair of thick steaks on the barbie, and we dined very well. Too well. <sighs> I don't think I'll make it to two in the morning, I said, sucking back on another can of Pilsner. One of us should uh, sack out while the other stands watch in case something happens. Okay, Morris agreed. But you're taking the first watch. But you're taking first watch. And so I did. And promptly fell asleep. I woke up with a start and felt a wave of cold fear wash over me. What time was it? I grabbed my phone and saw that it was 3.09 a.m., the wee small hours of the morning, long past the witching hour. I could hear Morris's raucous snores emanating from the bedroom. Pulling myself together, I checked the security footage and, and I was just in time to see the white figure of the cryptid of the rake streaking across the patch of dry lawn and into the trees. I quickly roused Morris, who blurted, So, so it was trying to get in, eh? I don't know, I said. It seemed to be running away. We went to check the security cams, and while I didn't say anything to Morris, I felt the chilled, icy fingers of fear running up and down my spine. I was suddenly terrified, just terrified. And I wondered if he was, too. What the hell? Morris was checking all three of the security cameras he had stationed around the house. And the camera out front showed two figures standing on the rutted driveway. Two kids. What the hell? Morris repeated. What are two kids doing out here in the middle of the night? I was afraid I knew why. I think maybe they're the black-eyed children, I said quietly. Black-eyed what? But there was no time to explain, for at that exact moment there came a knock on the cabin door. Before I could stop him, Morris called out, Who's there? There was a moment's silence before we heard a plaintive male voice say, Please, sir, please let us in. We're lost, and we need to phone our mother. Morris instinctively made for the door. He was a kind man, and no doubt intended to open it. But before I could stop him, he stopped dead, and turned to look at me, his eyes wide. He was suddenly terrified, too. I had come across the room to stop him. Now I whispered in his ear, Don't engage with them. He mouthed, What? And I was leading him back into the living room when we heard a second plaintive voice, a girl's this time, crying, Please, Morris, please let us in. We're cold, and we want to phone our mummy. Uh, who are you, and how the hell do you know my name? Morris yelled, in both fear and anger. There was no point in trying to keep quiet then. I told Morris what little I knew about the B.E.K., and how it was imperative we not let them into the cabin. The whole time, the kids had been parading around the outside, 
knocking on the walls and chanting, Come out, come out, wherever you are. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Morris, Morris, come out and play. We came up with a stratagem to avoid listening to them. We turned on the local heavy metal rock station so loud it shook the cabin's foundations, but we also drowned them out. Almost. Almost. For we could still hear them. Hear them in our minds. Eventually, we slept. Dawn was breaking when I awoke. The music was no longer playing. I rubbed my eyes and... 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 And it sat on the edge of the bed. It was hairless, emaciated, an albino, with a thin mouth, a thin mouth full of sharp teeth, glowing hot pink eyes, and huge rake-like hands, ending in incredibly long claws. It was the rake, and I realized, I realized, this was the end. Are you sure?